Welcome back to Jeff Randall Live with me, Joel Hills. Now, some rare good news on the high street as Sports Direct has announced plans to further expand its international reach. The sportswear retailer has agreed deals for majority stakes in two companies, in Austria and in the Baltics. It means Sports Direct will take a 51% stake in the leading Austrian sports good chain EAG and a 60% stake of Sportland International Group, the biggest sports retailer across the Baltic region. Well, Sports Direct has come a long way since its first shop was opened in Maidenhead more than 30 years ago by Mike Ashley, the entrepreneur, of course, who owns uh, Newcastle United. It's now the UK's largest sports retailer with almost 400 stores in Britain and it also operates in seven other countries. The company's latest annual report shows a pre-tax profit of almost £150 million, pounds, up 10% on the previous year. Joining me now to discuss this, Douglas McNeil, Investment Director at Charles Stanley. Douglas, Sports Direct has survived and thrived in a way that JJB Sport didn't. On the face of it, they're both sports shops. What was the difference between them? Well, I think it comes down to size. As you say, they were similar businesses. Uh, they were facing similar issues in, the, in, in terms of the, uh, the consumer downturn, the recession and debt levels. If you go back a few years, there were jitters about Sports Direct's debt levels. Um, but scale matters in this business, and that's what Sports Direct had in its favour. It's a very big outfit. It employs some 12,000 people, uh, sales of more than £2 billion. And scale matters because you have to deal with some very big suppliers in the sports retail business, Nike and Adidas, for example. And you have to be able to negotiate on equal terms with those, otherwise they're going to squeeze your margins uh, and that can spell disaster. Um, what's the logic of this deal? I mean, one of these firms is loss-making, isn't it? Indeed. In many ways, it's a, quite a typical uh, Sports Direct deal in the sense that it's a business that has some challenges, clearly, as the loss would suggest. So you can compare it to deals that Sports Direct has done recently for Republic, the, uh, the insolvent fashion retailer, um, JGB Sports, in fact. It bought some of the assets of that. Not, so many, not many of them, though, did it? Well, no, no. It bought about 20 stores, so it, mm. was, it was very much the rump of the business. Um, but what they're doing here is they're buying a business that clearly needs to be turned around. And in a sense, that makes it a, a high-risk uh, venture. Um, but at the same time, it's also... A, a low risk venture in the sense that they're paying quite a low multiple, only about 20% of revenue, that's pretty cheap. Um, and so in the worst case scenario, things don't go well, it's not as if they're betting the farm on it. British retailers expanding across Europe, and we've heard that headline once or twice before, it doesn't always turn out into a, turn into a, a decent story. No, I mean, the classic example would be Marks & Spencer's, which has expanded in Europe and contracted and is currently in the process of expanding again. I think the, the problem for British retailers, not so much Sports Direct perhaps, is that there's so little growth to be had in the domestic market at the moment that if you want growth, you've got to go and look for it overseas. Of course, that only works if you think you can take market share from the existing players overseas. Sports Direct clearly thinks that it does. It's generating a lot of cash at the moment. It could return that cash to shareholders. Mike Ashley has a seat on the board. We can assume that he's put the case for returning cash to to shareholders uh, to the board, they've obviously decided between them that they think they can get better returns by investing it in Europe. Uh, we can see here, uh, uh, look at what's happened to Sports Direct share price since it floated back in uh, uh, 2007. I mean, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't always looked on favourably, was it? I mean, uh, wh why did the city take against Sports Direct initially? Well, it missed a few profit targets, and of course that went down badly. Uh, and Mike Ashley's relationship with the city was pretty prickly to begin with, you might what recall. Was that? Uh, well, he seemed to think that he knew how to run his business perfectly well without any advice from the sidelines from fund managers and analysts. And indeed, when you look at the way the share price has recovered, um, he perhaps had pretty good grounds for thinking that. If you remember as well, he purchased Newcastle United, which I think in some quarters uh, uh, was uh, possibly seen as evidence of, uh, of him losing focus on the business. Um, so all in all relations were uh, at a low ebb at one point with the city, but they have recovered. Um, so Mike Ashley's they've fallen in love with his personality, because he is a bit of a personality. He certainly is. Um, and uh, if you look at the results he's posted, that's the, that's the proof of the pudding. Uh, personalities are all very well, uh, but what the city really cares about are the numbers. And if you look at Sports Direct profit for the first half of the, the, the year that's just ended, for example, um, you can see that profits have gone up at the pre-tax level from about $100 million the year before to $125 million. That's a pretty good rate of growth. Um, we've mentioned the, the European ambitions. Uh, how Sports Direct doing in the UK? 
Well, pretty well as it happens. We've mentioned the profit numbers. Uh, its staff have been the beneficiaries of a tremendous profit-sharing scheme, which has uh, led to good things. They have, many of them, enjoyed bonuses in, in, in the form of shares uh, equal to their annual salary last year. There will be another payout this year, which may double or triple the earnings of some staff. Goodness, uh, I mean, really? Indeed, indeed. And uh, that has led to uh, greatly reduced rates of staff turnover, as you might imagine. <laughs> um, and, of course, replacing staff is quite a big expense in, in the retail business. It's also led to good performance on things like energy consumption in stores. The staff are clearly being much more careful about switching the lights off and, and that sort of thing. Um, so they have done well. The shareholders have done well. Um, and the company is making a pretty decent fist of coming to terms with internet retail. So at the moment, set fair for Sports Direct. Uh, they were on the bonus if... Newcastle United won the last game of the season as well, is that right? Well, there was talk of uh, something like that. I, I, I mean, uh, I think when you look at Newcastle United's performance last season, I'm not sure there would be any major bonuses being paid out there. <laughs> um, but uh, there's always next season. Hope D springs eternal. Uh, Douglas McNeil, Investment Director, Charles Stanley, thank you very much for that. Uh, that's almost all we've got time for this evening. Before I go, here is my number of the day. It is $10 million. It's how much the Nasdaq has agreed to pay regulators after botching Facebook's market debut a year ago now. Their computer system crashed as a result of the volume of trades. How not to win friends. Now, you've been watching Jeff Randall live. If you missed any of this evening's interviews, they're all on the Sky News for iPad app already tomorrow. We're talking about the future of the Royal Mail with the business minister, Michael Fallon, and the head of the union. Billy Hayes. Next up, all the top stories here on Sky News.